Many thanks to all our friends on The Five. Welcome to Hannity. This is a Fox News alert. The president condemning yet again in the strongest possible terms the events in Charlottesville, Virginia. The violence and the mayhem. Also tonight, we will analyze the horrific politicizing of these events. That's tonight's very important breaking news opening monologue. All right, what we saw take place in Charlottesville, Virginia over the weekend, it is disgusting, it is despicable. And it's really hard to imagine in this day and age that there are actually people out there that could do this to their fellow human beings. It's hard to imagine that there are people in this country that have these types of hateful, inexcusable, racist, white supremacist views. And it's also hard to imagine that there are still some people that have that high level of ignorance that, yes, live amongst us. Now, there's no place in this country for these neo-Nazi, fascist, white supremacists. And they, what they stand for, should be condemned in the widest terms possible by all good people in this country. What they believe in, it's the complete opposite of what the United States of America stands for. And sadly, we have seen way too much of these kinds of acts over the years. Now, as far as the groups that were involved, the white supremacists. Do they have a constitutional right to free speech, regardless of how disgusting and offensive what they say is? Unfortunately, well, that's how our First Amendment works. Even the American Civil Liberties Union, one of Trump's biggest outspoken critics, they defended the organization this weekend and their right to rally in court so that it's allowed to happen. And then the other groups down there also have the same right to speak out against these evil people. Now make no mistake, this was all provoked by radical, racist extremists, but the violent clashes should never happen. Where were the police over the last number of years? Also, we have watched extremists on both sides battling it out. We have seen this act too often. It doesn't solve a thing. And it only gives these radicals on both sides more ammo so they can continue to spread their hatred. And what's so repulsive in all of this we have a woman that died, dozens of fellow human beings injured this weekend over what? A bunch of idiots fighting over stupid, ignorant, anti-American views and ideas. Now, instead of covering this horrible situation fairly, openly, honestly, like we're going to do tonight, over the weekend, we saw the destroy Trump establishment media go into a feeding frenzy trying to assign blame as quickly as possible and of course to paint the president, all conservatives, all Republicans as racist and bigots. That's not true. These are the exact same tactics we see by the left every two and four years during the election cycles and we'll have more on that in just a minute. President Trump is not a racist. Conservatives, the conservatives I know, like and love, Republicans I know and like, they're not racist. The country is filled with people that are good, honorable, and decent. And that's most conservatives, if not all that I know. Now, I'm not saying, nobody's saying racism doesn't exist. It does exist in this country. It's sad. But if we're going to be fair and honest, this is not exclusive to one particular party. Now, there are racists on both sides in America. But most Americans, what are they? Good, great people. They condemn racism. They get up every morning. They work hard, play by the rules, pay their taxes, create that others want, need, and desire. And you know what? They raise their kids to be good people. You know, for all the white supremacists out there, you know what? There are others on the left. The Nation of Islam leader, for example, Louis Farrakhan, that are insane. It's a simple truth. But all we heard all weekend long from the left, the mainstream media, is that these extremists in Charlottesville this weekend somehow represent all conservatives, that the president supports them. He doesn't. All Republicans. And they attack the president again and again and again. Don't believe it? Take a look. If you're looking for the roots of why white supremacists and neo-Nazis felt emboldened to march on a college town, you don't have to look very far from the White House. We have a racist as a president because a man that cannot stand up and condemn the Ku Klux Klan and Nazism is a racist. He was a coward. He didn't have the spine to behave like the leader of the United States, and I feel that to be shameful. He's not only unfit to be president. In my book, his lack of empathy, his lack of leadership, his lack of courage, he's unfit to be human. 
Unbelievable. Unfit to be human. All right. Let's go back. Let's take a look at the president's original comments on all of this. This all happened before a madman plowed into a group of people with his car. Here's what President Trump tweeted. Quote, we all must be united and condemn all that hate stands for. There's no place for this kind of violence in America. Let's come together as one. The president also said, we must remember this truth. No matter our color, creed, religion, or political party, we are all Americans first. And once the protesters, that once it turned deadly, President Trump immediately came out and gave a statement. Here's what the president said. Take a look. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides. On many sides. Now, all weekend long, I, like many of you, watched the media going insane, acting like they didn't know what the president was talking about. They ran with a false narrative all weekend. Oh, big story. He didn't mention the groups by name. Well, it couldn't be more obvious, more transparent who the president was talking about. He was standing for equal justice under the law against racism. And the press, what did they do? They use a high-profile act of violence to bludgeon the president and conservatives politically. So predictable. Now, it was crystal clear what the president was talking about. But the press, they went after him anyway. And the destroy Trump, they didn't care about the violence, seemingly, or the racial tensions they're creating, or the civil unrest as much as they cared about using this tragedy as an opportunity to attack people they disagree with, and in particular, the president, to try and inflict as much damage politically as possible. You know what? Just like they have done since November 8th, that's a simple truth. So President Trump, once again, he came out today, he condemned again what happened, and yes, he called out the groups by name. Take a look. Racism is evil, and those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. But you know what? We all know that's not going to be good enough. The media's never going to be satisfied with anything the president says or does because it's not part of their ideology and narrative. They want to paint the president, conservatives, Republicans, as racist and bigoted by ignoring what he said this weekend, ignoring him over the years again and again and again, condemning white supremacists, people like David Duke. For example, let me give you an example. This is Donald Trump over the years, something the destroy Trump media will never show you, condemning Duke, white supremacists. Look. What are your views on the Ku Klux Klan and white supremacists? I totally disavow the Ku Klux Klan. I totally disavow David Duke. I've been doing it now for two weeks. This is, you're probably about the 18th person that's asked me the question. I didn't even know he endorsed me. David Duke endorsed me? Okay. All right. I disavow. David Duke announced his Senate candidacy, claiming your agenda for his own, or essentially saying, glad that you spoke out. Are you ready before you ask the question? Newt Gingrich said, every Republican should repudiate this guy, I no did. matter what it takes. And I do. Right. Rebuked. Is that okay? Rebuked. Rebuked. Done. What do you see as the biggest problem with the Reform Party right now? Well, you've got David Duke just joined. A bigot, a racist, a problem. I mean, this is not exactly the people you want in your party. Bigot, racist, rebuke, repudiate, want nothing to do with. Now, President Trump and the people that voted for him and that support his agenda, they don't like racists. They, don't, they do not like what went down in Charlottesville. Conservatives that I have my whole life, I have known my whole life, people like me. What was this election about? The forgotten men and women, the people that are out of work, in poverty, on food stamps, the doubling of our national debt. What, did this, what was this election about? It was about getting jobs, getting our economy back in shape. It was also a country safe and secure. That's what this election was about. But yet every two to four years, the left, the Democrats, the media, they divide Americans by playing the race card every single election. Remember 1998, radio ad, Missouri, oh, elect a Republican and black churches are going to burn. Or the James Byrd ad in 2000 when George Bush supported the death penalty for the guy that brutally murdered an innocent man by the name of James Byrd. For example, take a look throughout history. Many Republicans talk in coded racial language about takers and losers. They demonize President Obama and encourage 
the ugliest impulses of the paranoid fringe. If you accept the support of Klan sympathizers before you are president, you will accept their support after you're president. They're going to put you all back in chains. It's wrong what the leader of the Republican Party and this Congress. He says cadence, his tone, oh, 1998 before a predominantly black audience. He even went as far as to say Republicans know that theirs is the wrong agenda for African Americans. They don't even want to count you in the census. What a lie. And then there's President Obama's book. Remember Audacity of Hope? Where was the media? Remember he recounted a sermon from Reverend Jeremiah Wright from the Church of GD America? White folks greed one runs a world in need. Was the media outraged over this world? A world where cruise ships throw away more food in a day than most residents of Port au Prince see in a year. Where white folks greed runs a world in need. Apartheid in one hemisphere. Apathy in another hemisphere. Oh, he's so inspired by Reverend Wright, Black Liberation Theology. He sat in the pews of Wright's church for 20 years. Remember Reverend Wright? Remember him attacking U.S. KKK of A? And the Sunday after 9-11, America's chickens coming home to roost. Take a look. The stuff we have done overseas is now brought right back into our own front yards. America's chickens are coming home to roost. No, no, no. Not God bless America. God damn America. That's in the Bible for killing innocent people. God damn America for treating our citizens as less than human. 20 plus years in that church. How many in the media covered Ayers and Dorn? Well, that's where President Obama started his political career. What about the Nation of Islam leader, Louis Farrakhan, who called white people the devil, the skunk of the planet Earth, and has said many racist, anti-Semitic things, too many to count. Recent report, Daily Caller, well, they're saying that Farrakhan is claiming, and there's audio of it, that he met privately with then-Senator Barack Obama in 2008, before he announced his presidential run, and he said that the Nation of Islam supported Barack Obama quietly for president, and when he was a community organizer. Now, of course, as the Daily Caller pointed out, neither Obama or Farrakhan want to talk about that friendship. Has there been any investigation by the media? Pretty shocking. Well, the media didn't think it was important for you to know these things. They didn't cover a lot of those things. Then there's President Obama's handling. Remember all the high profile racial cases when he was president, where he jumped to conclusions, rushed to judgment without facts or information? He's supposed to be a lawyer, too. Watch this. The Cambridge police uh, acted stupidly. There is a long history in this country of African Americans and Latinos uh, being stopped by law enforcement disproportionately. In fact, the African American community is also knowledgeable that uh, there is a history of racial disparities in the application of our criminal laws. And President Obama also had members from the group, remember Black Lives Matter? The people chanting things like pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon, talking about cops? Or were they talked about, what do we want, dead cops? When do we want them now? Oh, they were invited to the White House where the president praised that group. Take a look. We've also got some young people here who are making history as we speak. Uh, people like uh, Brittany, uh, who served on our police task force in the wake of Ferguson and has led uh, many of the protests uh, that took place there and shined a light on the injustice that was happening. Uh, people like uh, DeRay uh, McKesson, who's uh, done some outstanding work mobilizing uh, in Baltimore around these issues. Remember Hillary Clinton running for president? She praised Black Lives Matter. The same people, what do we want? Dead cops. When do we want them now? Watch her. And we do have to stand up and say loudly and clearly, Black Lives Matter. There's a long list. We need a new New Deal for communities of color. Senator and Webb. You ever see the media talk about these things? This is why shows like this, in my opinion, are different from the liberal mainstream. Ignored these examples for decades. They also they don't seem to care about the threats of of violence that have been made repeatedly against our current president, President Trump. Remember, this photo was so graphic, we always have to issue the warning. It shows Kathy Griffin posing, ISIS fighter, bloody, severed head of President Trump, Johnny Depp talking about killing a president, Madonna talking about blowing up the Trump White House. Really? Take a look. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? <laughs> A 
an actor. <laughs> I lie for a living. <laughs> However, it's been a while. <laughs> and maybe it's time. Yes, I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. Imagine, God forbid, somebody said that in the Obama years. Then there's Shakespeare in the Park, that performance showing a Trump-like person being brutally stabbed to death. Also other celebrities, Snoop Dogg, Mickey Rourke, advocating for violence against the president. What about, remember the Bernie Sanders supporter, the one that targeted Republicans at baseball practice, leaving Congressman Steve Scalise fighting for his life? Well, was the media blaming Democrats for that? No, and by the way, they shouldn't have, and I don't blame Bernie either. Now, by the way, the left is totally unhinged at this point. This is sadly who they are, the double standard they adopt. And by the way, after all these examples where Democrats line up to condemn those people, where are they condemning all the things we're playing tonight? You see, they got a separate set of rules for Republicans and Democrats. Every two to four years, Democrats divide the country. They play identity politics. It's been a part of this playbook the Democrats use for generations. So it's time for the Destroy Trump establishment media to start recognizing how they have a massive double standard, that they have an agenda and ideology. Because just like, sadly, white supremacists in Charlottesville Hatred of any kind should not be tolerated or ever given a free pass, period. Whoever's involved in the hatred, like the hate we saw this weekend. Joining us with Reaction, Salem Radio, nationally syndicated host Larry Elder, Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark, Fox News contributor DeRoy Murdoch, Sheriff Clark, we'll start with you. Anything I'm saying here that's wrong? No, it's spot on, Sean. You know, and the liberal media couldn't control themselves. They couldn't resist the opportunity to somehow turn this on President Trump. I was proud of the original statement. He knows, the President, you have to be measured. You have to be calm. You want to calm the waters. You want to be thoughtful in your initial statement because it's early on and you don't have all the facts and you don't want to speak out of hand. Then over the weekend, as he learned more facts, he came out today and, and reiterated what he said in even some more forceful terms. I was proud of the way he handled that. But again, you know, they took this ugly situation. There's no winners in Charlotte, Charlottesville. It was hate versus hate. You had the neo-Nazis. You had uh, Antifa. You had Black Lives Matter clashing. Uh, there's just no winners there. But uh, yeah. every time one of these situations happens, you know, you see the worst of people sometimes. I think we saw it out of the left. Larry Elder, I've known, we've known each other for yeah, going back a couple of decades now. Right. You have taken a lot of heat over a very long, successful career <laughs> for pointing out a lot of the things I tried to mention in this monologue. Right. Um, why the double standard? Have you figured it out? I haven't been able to figure it out, but I'll tell you, 1963, I'm 12 years old, Governor George Wallace, a Democrat, stands in front of a school door and defends segregation. Fast forward, Sean, 28 years later, David Duke runs as a Republican, gets zero support from the Congress uh, for his candidacy. The RNC puts out a statement blasting his candidacy. George Herbert Walker Bush called him a racist. Uh, and. Uh, the only time we ever see David Duke again is when the cable news digs him up. The man hasn't been relevant in decades. And the reason for all of this attention, the reason the media is covering this thing like it's a Super Bowl, is because of this narrative that Donald Trump blatantly reached out to white racists to get elected. If that's the case, how is it that he got fewer percentage, less percentage of white voters than Mitt Romney did, a greater percentage of minority voters, blacks, uh, Hispanics, uh, and Asians than Mitt Romney did? The blacks, Hispanics, and Asians were too stupid to realize they were joining a movement with a bunch of white racists, and the white racists were too stupid to realize they were joining a movement with a bunch of people of color that they don't like? Come on. You know, DeRoy, am I right as I watched this weekend, and I, I just decided, I made a decision, I'm going I'm to watch this, I'm going to absorb this, I took notes all weekend. I saw a media hit a new low, and it's like it happens and they just wanted politically to bludgeon, politically I'm speaking, this president and tie him to this in spite of what he said historically, which they've never played, and in spite of what he, he said earlier this weekend. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, here's a name you may not have heard very much uh, throughout this controversy, James Alex Fields Jr. 
He is the neo-Nazi who allegedly, because he's uh, innocent until proven guilty in court, uh, allegedly drove that car, ran into those people, uh, killed a woman named Heather Heyer, a young woman of age 32, and I believe uh, hit another 19 people who were injured, some of them very seriously. Uh, he's the one responsible for this mayhem, and yet the whole weekend it sounded as if uh, Donald Trump were the person driving that car, smacking into those people. Uh, I think he probably could have avoided a lot of this controversy if he'd come out harder earlier on this, but nonetheless, you've seen exactly as you say, Sean, the, the, the media and a lot of uh, enemies of President Trump trying to blame him for all of this rather than putting the blame where it belongs, which is on a neo-Nazi driving a car into a pile of protesters. Mm -hmm. All right, stay right there. More with Sheriff Clark, more Larry Elder, more with DeRoy Murdoch right after the break. Also tonight, we'll check in with former Governor Mike Huckabee. He weighs in on this weekend's horrific event of it from Charlottesville. Straight ahead. condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. It has no place in America. And as I have said many times before, no matter the color of our skin, we all live under the same laws. We all salute the same great flag. As we continue on Hannity, that was more of the president's speech. Again, speaking out more today, condemning all the hatred in all forms. In terms of Charlottesville, we continue with Larry Elder, Sheriff David Clark, and Dory Murdoch. Sheriff, you know, you, you got one guy, Maxine Waters, I'm sorry, tweeting out yesterday, it's the white supremacist White House. You've got a guy in the New York Daily News, Roland, whoever his name is, saying the president has blood on his hands. You got Rob Reiner saying pretty much that the president has been you know, literally almost the, the, the same exact thing as, as he goes out and attacks the president and and saying that the president has been stoking racism for years. We just played a montage over the years of him not doing it. Montage over the years of him not doing it. And then you look at the media, they just say it and they say it again and again. And I, I don't know what this means for the country if the public can't get information that is factual anymore well those were political cheap shots that you expect out of somebody like maxine waters and other people on the left like i said to score some cheap uh, political points i know donald trump president trump now i know him personally look he does not have a racist bone in his body as a matter of fact back in the 90s uh, he was awarded in new york along with rosa parks and uh, muhammad ali they were given awards for their contribution to the black community in New York City. So, you know, this is just a made up narrative. But like I said, you know, I, I thought it was um, uh, pretty embarrassing too that politicians on both sides could be enough to flaunt their racial sensitivity and their moral superiority out of this thing when, like I said, it was an ugly situation. And instead of um, waiting for this thing to settle down, and uh, hold the people accountable who should be held accountable. Like I said, you get hate versus hate there. Uh, no, they all said, hey, there's a political opportunity here, but especially on the left, they, every time they get, every chance they get, no matter what President Trump would have said, it wouldn't have drawn any applause from the left. Uh, that's just the way that they are right now. But uh, again, I thought what he said was measured. It was thoughtful. It was very presidential. And it calmed the waters, unlike his prede Larry. predecessor, Barack Obama, who after every one of these situations poured hot sauce on a simmering situation. Right. Uh, and, and the president jumped the gun on all those cases and ended up, you know, four-time loser on Cambridge, on, on Trayvon Martin, on, on Ferguson, on Freddie Gray, Baltimore, Larry Elder. What about CNN commentator Trump is unfit to be human? Human. <laughs> right. And, and how about Donnie jo Anderson Deutsch on NBC? Trump's a sniveling coward and a racist. Right. And wow. Anderson Cooper, Imagine a if a conservative guy. said that about Obama. <laughs> right. Let, let's condemn all bigots, whether it's uh, David Duke or whether it's uh, uh, Maxine Waters. Maxine Waters uh, has never seen a Republican president she hasn't called a racist. The other day, she even called uh, Alan Dershowitz a racist. And what about the 50 plus visits that one of the nation's biggest anti Semites, Al Sharpton, made to Obama's White House? Why wasn't the concerned about bigoted media calling out Obama for inviting this man uh, that uh, a local Jewish leader uh, accused of fomenting the greatest pogrom in the history of, of America, the Crown Heights riots? Why weren't uh, the media condemning these kinds of things? This is the kind of double standard that drives people like Donald Trump crazy, and I don't blame him. <laughs> what do you think? I'll give you the final word tonight to DeRoy. 
Uh, yeah, if uh, Donald Trump really is this white supremacist, why did he go campa uh, campaign in black neighborhoods uh, last fall? He spoke in a black church. He went to a, a school choice setting in Cleveland. He won 8% of the black vote. That's not a huge number, but that's one third more than Mitt Romney did, who got six. Uh, and he's really dedicated his, uh, his uh, presidency to school choice, to expanding options for black uh, families to send their parents or send their kids rather somewhere they actually might learn something. So uh, despite all these claims by the left that he's a white supremacist, here's a Republican who actually has reached out for black support and gotten it. All right, guys, thank you very much. Certainly the country needs strength and truth now. Coming up, we'll have more on the abusively biased mainstream establishment media politicizing the events in Charlottesville over the weekend and trying to paint every conservative as a racist in this country. Former Governor Mike Huckabee is next. Welcome back to Hannity. So 